Hello everyone uh, and welcome to what is the very first video um, from Intensely Relaxed Gaming. My name is Matt and joining me today is Daz. Hello. <laughs> so um, today we're going to be looking at uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Um, this is, I probably don't need to tell any of you who are now watching this video, the new um, smaller version game uh, for from um, Cellophile Games. It's in the Gloomhaven universe, of course. Um, we're going to be starting right at the very beginning, so you can learn some of the rules with us as we go along. Um, we've chosen our characters, um, so I'm playing the Demolitionist, and uh, you're playing the Red Guard, aren't you, Dad? Red Guard. Um, if you want to skip ahead uh, to the gameplay, please um, feel free to click the button. should be sort of down here-ish. Um, we're going to read through the scenario book so you can sort of follow it and, um, with the story with us at the same time. Um, so literally, we're going to be learning on the job with you guys and we'll see how we crack on. So without further ado, um, the scenario book reads and the story thusly. It will be good to get back to the sleeping lion. After a fortnight going up and down the still river, chasing a bad lead on a missing blacksmith, you can almost feel the warmth of the inn's hearth when Gloomwaven's walls come into view. You are almost home. To be fair, it's not just the blacksmith. An alarming number of people within the poorer districts of the city have gone missing. Usually nothing comes of it, though. Just another poor soul forgotten out here on the edge of civilization. The blacksmith's wife, however, Sandy, managed to somehow escape uh, sorry, scrape enough money together to hire you to find her husband. You're not sure where the money came from, but no matter the source, it couldn't have come easy, which makes it doubly painful to return to the city empty-handed. True, Sandy was a little tight on the payment, but you are the Jaws of the Lion, one of the most well-known mercenary groups in this backwater dump of a town. Surely it can't hurt to take a charity case every once in a while. Getting good at getting good jobs is about maintaining reputation after all, which is why you really need to get to the bottom of this and not return to the widow with nothing but calluses on your feet. Also, you probably shouldn't call her a widow to her face. <laughs> yeah, probably. At least not until the fate of the blacksmith has been confirmed. Given, however, that none of those who have disappeared have returned, the outlook is grim. As these cheery thoughts pass through your mind, you notice movement up ahead and immediately draw your weapons. The sun has dipped low in the sky, reducing visibility, but you can clearly see some ramshackle wooden barricades blocking the road in front of you. And sure enough, as you cautiously approach the scene, vermlings jump out from behind the obstructions, flashing crude swords and sharp sticks. You have to admit, they're quite tired from the day's journey, but still, these oversized rats certainly picked the wrong group of travellers to ambush today. You are the jaws, jaws of the lion, after all, and are always ready to show there is only one outcome for those who dare threaten you. Well, that's fight that and talk. Good. Fight and talk. Okay, so the introduction, the road back to Gloomhaven has been long, and now to get attacked by vermlings when you all you want is a warm meal and a soft bed, well... It makes you mad. Is that your angry face? It's, it's as angry as it gets. <laughs> mad enough to kill these mangy creatures before you collapse from exhaustion. Of course, the vermlings have other plans. They gibber about wanting your coin and meat on your bones. Nasty things, really. Best to ignore their ranting and end quickly. Um, so, this is how we set up. We've got the designations where we need to put these um, creatures. So I'll put this one there, this one here, and this one here. The little scheme on the board is quite handy because you've got the sort of vertical colours. The first one denotes whether that thing needs to be placed in a first uh, in a two-player game, okay. third-player game, and fourth-player game. Um, yellow highlighting elite mod monsters, and white's just your regular. And then these locations, you can see the top one is black, um, which means that we don't have to place any mo monsters, that's, so that's, yes. that's less for us. Awesome. Um, then, of course, we've got the four entry spots that we can choose to pick. Where do you want to go to, to oh. start carving these guys up? Mm -hmm. It seems quite realistic in here. For, um, Bold. 
I like oh, it. Let's go for it. <laughs> no holds barred. You're going straight. No in. holds barred. Well, I'm playing the demolitionist. Um, so um, I seem to be some sort of mad, mad lady with um, some bombs. If you've seen the art. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be a little bit sensible and try and lob them over your shoulder. That would be very handy. I would uh, <laughs> I'd appreciate not getting blown up. Um, so. Um, we've both played a little bit of Gloomhaven, but it has been quite some time. And the, and the main attraction for this this game in particular was because of um, it being a smaller, more condensed version of the game. It's more likely to get in. Gloomhaven at times can feel a little overwhelming because um, they've just done such a wonderful job on, on, on such a large game. I mean, if you talk, talk about value for money in terms of hours mm. of gameplay, you're going to be hard pressed to find any anything else that matches that but on the other side of the coin you feel like you've got to have a real commitment to it and be able to get it to the the the, the table very regularly it's uh, nice to have a game that you can just fit in and not be too long and still have fun playing so absolutely and the tape and the footprint of the game um is i mean you could probably play it on a two by two table at this point anyway i don't know how much bigger it may get but we'll find out um, so trying to figure out turn order, unlike a lot of games, um, even co-op ones where you might be able to choose who goes when, um, you don't have that in this. It is very much that you choose two of this, what we start with, which is six cards, um, choosing an action from the top half of the card and another action from the bottom of the half of the card. And they really vary as to what the, the cards are offer. Um, when we choose which cards we're playing, we'll flash these up on the screen for you. So you can follow along at home um, and see what it is that we've chosen to do. Um, and picking one of the two cards um, that you do choose to play, you can choose to nominate which of those two cards um, you're going to use the initiative number of, which if we have a look at this card here, you can see is that big number in the middle. So you can choose when you go. The other thing is with this game is you're not allowed to tell each other when you're going, what your initiative order is going to be. You can say, I'm going to go early, I'm going to go in the middle, I'm going to go late. You also can't say how strong the attack options or your movements are. I'm going to move far, I'm going to move short, I'm not going to move much. My attacks are going to be relatively weak or whatever, but you can't say, I'm going to do a ranged attack too after I move to, and it's going to do this. You know, you can't be very specific, and that is part of um, the real strategy of the game. Okay. So... Let us go silent for a moment um, and see what it is that we're going to choose to do. So these guys have got five hit points each. They only move one square and they hit for a base of two damage. The yellow guy is a bit tougher, however. He's, he's the same movement of damage, but he has got twice the amount of health. He's got 10 health. Um, They're going to be no trouble for us. You reckon? Hopefully. <laughs> Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's have a look here. So, I think Ooh. I think I think I'm going to go quite quickly. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to go quite quickly and I'm going to try and do a couple of attacks on this 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 chap up front. So I turn them to make sure that they're all pretty good for the camera. Um, less good for us, but hey, what, what are these sacrifices for? Chosen? Happy? Um, never happy. As, no, we'll, happy. we'll see how it goes. Okay. I'm going to go on initiative 19, so that is definitely going to put me at, above the Vermling Raider. What are you going on? I'm going to hopefully... Oh, you're going even faster than me. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be that way, but... That's fine, that's fine. I mean, it just, that's, that, I mean, as long as they're going last, we can't really complain. So, what are you going to do first, then? We are going to... I'm going to get in the way of all the bombs that you're about to throw. Uh, this well, what it sounds I don't like. think any of mine are big splash damage type oh, okay. bombs, so we should be okay. Please don't hurt me with your bombs. <laughs> so what are we I'm doing? I'm just going to do... Okay. 
So I can choose up of either cards? Either card. I... No, you don't. Yeah, yeah okay. you can either move off the bottom of the left card or the right card and then use the attack of the one that you haven't obviously chosen yet. We are going to move up to four. Okay. So where are you going to move to? Mm. So you can get in the way of all of those, can't you, if you're going to go around the back? Mm -hmm. Depends if you're feeling particularly mm -hmm. frisky. Mm -hmm. I'll get over here, I think. Okay. One, two, three. Right behind him. Right behind him. He's right never going to know what hit him. Okay, so then um, your attack that you're going to be using is on that left card there. So you're going to be doing three and you're going to be immobilizing him. Oh. So we'll put a little immobilization on him. He's I just thought I'd stick him in place so he doesn't can't move out of the way of your, your, your bombs. So. <laughs> well, it's all good, but I shouldn't be putting a condition until you hit, because if you... Okay. Hit, I, I, I'm pretty sure if you don't fail to do any damage, you, you perhaps don't put conditions on. Oh, no, no, just checking. You do still put conditions on, so I can be yes. a bit a bit risky with it. So then you draw an attack modifier. You have shuffled that I deck. I have shuffled them as, as okay. well as possible. Well, let's see how well you shuffled them to yeah. three oh, plus okay. zero. So that's good. So he takes... Three damage, so he's already looking worse for wear. So he's got a total of five hit points. You've already done, you've done him in a bit. Done him in. Um, okay, so I am going to. I'm going to move four. One, two, three, four. So I'm also going to come up to oh. here. So we're we're flanking, um, and then my two hit um, on the other side. Is a one-two punch, which is actually two attacks, one at base two and one at base one. So they're not the strongest attacks, but there are a couple of them. So the first attack is a two plus a two. two. Right, so that's killed him. <laughs> Straight away. Punch. Can't blame that. Nice. Um, second one doesn't go through, obviously. Um, I seem to remember in Gloomhaven, monsters dropped uh, coins, but I've got a feeling that we don't do that. Oh. In this, uh, in this one yet. So I think that might be something that comes a little later. Um, but regardless, now it's the monster's turn. In this basic campaign, they are just going on round initiative order 50. Um, so we can take these away because this guy has died a death very quickly. And then we go around in numerical order. So number two, which is going to be the elite, will go first. He'll move directly as close as he can, just Hello. that one distance. Very slow. They must be very small. Very small. Well, they they don't look that small compared to no. us, but um, they are. He, he can't attack because there's nothing adjacent. And we just moved down the initiative order, so they're coming around here. This one's coming around here because we do have these blockades that are causing sort of impassable terrain, and that's them. So that's one whole turn. So then turn them. So then these two cards that you've used. Just go on the discard side of your card. Um, this doesn't say... No, it's not a recycle. Sometimes some of these cards have a renew that mean that you have to reshuffle your deck. I think it's just for crits and crit fails. You have to reshuffle your deck. So now we go to turn two. Um, we're already one up, so we can't... It's going well so far. We can't complain about that. I've got something called the big one. Ooh. So Aren't you lucky? So, yeah, oh, I'm not allowed to say card names, no. am I? No. Luckily enough, the, I don't know the, the cards yet, so <laughs> you're all good. Uh, so ignore that entirely. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's do that. I want to go quickish. So I'm going to do this. So, I'm going to go quickish. I'm going to aim an attack at these two. Well, we'll probably not be going quickish. No. Well, this is what we're learning at the same time, I guess, is that yeah. is, is what are what in terms of, you know, what are they good at? We only got generic descriptions, so the demolitionist is supposed to be good at melee. Let's go for those two. And you're good at, what is it, monster manipulation and something? Protection? Yeah, some protection, maybe. Okay. Right, let's... Go. So I'm going on a 20. 
I'm going to go on a 63. So you're going on a 63. I'm so going to be going last. Hopefully. You're going to be going I behind go them. Last. Okay. So, um, I am going to be moving. I've got to make sure that I don't screw this up because it is entirely possible for me to screw this up. Um, oh, as I think I already have. <laughs> it's a strong start. This is not. I've got no move. It was a mistake. You've got no move? I've got no move. I was reading the top rather bottom. Okay, well in this game we'll just say use the basic move on one of the two of them. Yeah, because we know that you can do it. On the cards there are basic plus two move and plus two damage. Um, just basic hits that do nothing special. So we'll do that. Um, but it is, is one that you have to keep an eye on, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, I forgot we were not using the basic. I'm going to do something which would seem silly, um, but I really want to do it. Not so silly, hopefully. Don't I'm, use kills. I'm going to go here um, uh, with, with my move two on the bottom of knock out the support. Then the second part of the card is destroy one obstacle, and if you do gain strength and self. Um, so I will represent this one as being the one that's been destroyed, so we can walk through that now. Um, and then I get strength and self, so I may as well take it, even though it is only for the turn. So you get a little strength, little buff icon there. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks a little bit like a, a man flexing his guns. Um, and so... What that does is it gives me advantage on all of my attacks till the till my next turn, till the end of my turn, um, or oh, until the end of your next turn. Oh, until the end of the next turn. That's where reading helps. Reading does help. Um, but my second one is the big one, which is an attack to range to target to, which is why I wanted to go here, but then I realised it was three away to the to the second guy, and I didn't want to waste it. So they're going to suffer um, two damage, but this guy I would get disadvantage because it's a ranged attack in melee, but because I've got strengthened, it then just becomes a straight. So against the elite, it's going to be two damage minus one. So he takes one damage onto him and he is number two. And then the guy next to him is going to be a, t a two plus minus one or plus one. So he takes three. Uh, and he is number three. Uh, so that is me done. I can't do any more than that. But that's I have sort of stepped into the belly of the fire. In, that's in... fine. If I had read the cards, I would have mm. put some move on there so I could move a bit more. Because I did want to get into range both of these two and just do two damage to them. But I can't do that now, potentially. Potentially, well, they're going to go because they're going to, because you've gone oh, slow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I nearly forgot that they're going to move. Hopefully, I think they you've actually move. locked into I a think quite I decent. Like <laughs> if they come towards me, I'm happy. Good, right? Well, they will definitely do that. How happy we'll be afterwards it will be um, yet to see. Uh, their turn though, because you have gone last. So the elite is going to do uh, two damage to me, plus minus one. So it does one damage to me. So I do my little hit counter goes down one. Which way do we go? Am I going to get it right? I did guess right. Okay. So I'm on seven hit points now. Then this guy's going to walk here. You see? So I suspect it's going to work out for you. It's going to work out for me. Uh, and then this guy is still trying to close the gap. Um, it's getting stuck by his It's getting spots. stuck by his own barricades. His barricades were too good. Okay. And that's it. So you should see what what you're going to do now okay i will use my two moves on okay. this card two right there okay and then i'm going to use the power of the shield of spikes oh where two adjacent enemies suffer two damage wow okay so well this guy was already on three hit points from my bomb so you've killed him because he only can take five and then the elite guy has gone up to three damage so he's got seven health remaining not looking so elite now not looking so elite now not looking so elite so that's it that's the end of round number two so you should have a broad choice of cards left 
the only sure choice. I've got you... some movement on this one, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing you, sh- I mean, I, I can tell you right now, I'm going middling. I will go before the Vermlings are because we know what they're going on. Normally, we wouldn't necessarily know what they're going on, but I can go before them. But that's all I can do. I, that's all I can tell you. I'm hoping that I'll do a muddling attack. I might. I might. I'm going to try and. I'm going to try and do. I don't know if you're allowed to say conditions. Mm. I, th- I think, let's have a quick look. Does, when they're saying what you're able to say, can I say I'm going to stun something? Can I say that I'm going to... Um, oh, numerical values. Okay, so they're very specific about you can't say numerical values. So I'm going to try and stun, and, well, I will stun him, and I will also muddle him, mm-hmm. potentially. Yeah, I will muddle him as well, because it's a strong attack, so why wouldn't I? Just trying to work out where I'm going to go on the initiative. Well, try and go before him, I guess, because it's just it's still less damage. If mm-hmm. you can go before him, just go before him. Whether you go before me or not doesn't really matter. All right, ready? Flip those cards. Flip him. I'm going on a 42. I'm still above the Vermling. I will go on a 38. So you are going before me. So go for it then. What's your what's your decision? Oh you could you could smack him actually, couldn't you? Could twice. Smack him twice is what I'm thinking of doing. Oh do that, yeah. Go on then. Come on boy. Yeah. So you're gonna do the bottom action which is an attack for two damage. An attack for two. Okay, so that's two plus, plus, da, 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 da. So plus it's three. One. So it's three total. So he's now got four hit points left. And then I'm gonna attack and muddle. Don't know if that's gonna do anything. Yeah, of course it seems to have disadvantage if he does survive all of this. Oh, he's got disadvantage. Sweet. Yeah, so we're so gonna do three plus a minus, minus one. Okay. Not too good. That's all right. So damage like, is damage. Yeah, well, yeah, he's like, he's on two hit points left. Okay, there were interruptions from the door aside. Amazon delivering at a nice and late time tonight. Um, so you've just done uh, taken this guy down to two hit points on you, and now it's my turn. Well, I was going to stun and then attack, but I think I'll just attack and then move because then I can get in a better position. So I'm going to do an attack three plus. Zero is enough to kill him. So that is that gone by me. And then I am going to move to, and I can destroy um, and place the destruction token on one of the, oh, but is there actually a specific destruction token? Where might I find what those look like? So I'll have a look for them outside of the game, because I've got no idea what they look like. I wasn't aware it was a specific one. I don't really want to destroy the one between me and him though because that's going to allow him to hit me. Um, So do you know what? I'm just going to make it a bit easier for you to come I was going to say that would be very helpful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll run in there. So end of round three. So this is where we get to the first sort of Oh no, they've got to go, sorry, hasn't it? So all he's going to do is move, isn't it? So he's going to continue his slow Slow, steady walk Slow, steady to his walk. own, well, towards his own destruction. Oh, definitely. Okay. So, end of round, when they talk about uh, at the end of your third round, all of, six of your ability cards should be in your discard pile. You can get these cards back from the discard pile by short resting. If a character has at least two cards in their discard pile, then they perform a short rest at the end of round. When a character short rests, they take all of their cards in their discard pile, um, shuffle them, and then place one of them at random on the right side of their character map in their lost pile. No. So you don't get this back. So this is where increasingly you become more fatigued because your cards are effectively... Um, I don't think that's the worst one to lose. So I lost Twist and Punch. Eventually you're going to get rid of so many cards either by doing big abilities or by um, short resting like we're doing now. Um, that you don't have enough cards to form a turn, mm-hmm. at which point you're exhausted and you're out. Um, Just lost a, a Desert Knight. It was the attack and muddle one. 
Not too bad. It's quite a strong attack as well, isn't it's it? It's quite a strong attack. Attack. Okay, so now we've got to choose again. This guy hasn't taken any damage. Can you... I'm going to... Oh, you do know what? I've just got to be able to get there. We've just got to be able... I'm going to go quite quickly and I'm going to do a, a couple of hits on him. Oh, yeah. You probably know what that means. <laughs> As there's only card, one card that you've seen that allows me to do two hits. I am going to the next one. <laughs> Initiative. And keep an eye on it. And your movement. <laughs> and move. But I have cleared the way. So theoretically, um, you should be able to get, as long as you've got three or four movement, or you've got a couple of movement and a couple of range, just depends what you want to do. <laughs> yes. Happy? Set? We're good to go. All right. I'm going on a 19. You're going on a 14 again. Yeah, you beat 14. me. Every time I think I've, I've got ahead of you, <laughs> That's I, I don't think I changed the initiative order next last time. Okay. So what are you doing? Well, I'm going to move in my two and three. Okay. That's my movement turn. Okay. I'm just going to stay on the discard side. Yep. And then I'm going to do an attack of three arrange with do. Okay, go for it. So you're currently doing three damage. And then what do you get? The modifier is, oh, minus, minus one. one. But it's not a crit fail, so we should be happy with that. But it's now, it's only got three hit points left. Um, Look it out. So me, I am going to move four. So I was planning to make sure I'm not going to get in the way. So I'll come round back. I've still got strength. Oh, yes, you have. Because that specifically said until the end of your next turn. So first hit is going to be, it's my two my two hitter or my one punch, one two punch. One so two punch. the first one is going to be a zero and a crit miss. So that's fine. We don't get that. So it's a zero. So it does two damage. So he's on one health. And then my final one is a one minus one. Minus one, it does. <laughs> it does nothing, and so he's still alive on one. Barely, he's barely alive. That's definitely worse for wear. Yeah, well, that's a little embarrassing, even with strength. So, get rid of strength now. So he is actually still alive to have a go. So he is going to do his Bring one movement. Doesn't need to move because he's adjacent to me already, and then he's going to do a two attack damage. Plus a zero, so he's going to do two damage to me. So I'm down to five. I don't, I'm sure I'll be fine. But I hope so. It shows how even these guys, the damage can start piling up very quickly. I'm not taking any damage so far. I know. I'm, I'm, quite, well, I, I'm quite happy. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not playing in a particularly defensive way. It has to be said. Um, hopefully, I won't come back and and hurt me too much. Um, I am going to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go quite quickly, and I'm going to do um, a ranged attack. So if this doesn't kill him, I'm going to be mortally. I'm pretty mad. sure you're going to kill him. But can I do just in case you do not? <laughs> yeah, please have a backup. <laughs> please make it involve going before the warrior, just in case he crits me. I don't think even with a crit he can kill me. Um, but yeah, we'll go with this. Okay, we ready? So we are going with these two. Um, so I am going on a twenty. So that puts me, I think, at the top, and you're going on a forty-one. Forty-one. Okay, so before him, they're going below. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. So I'm going to move two, and then I'm going to destroy this to give myself strengthened and then i am going to attack him range with my range two target two there's only one left with advantage for a plus one and a plus one there we go so he is finally dead and we have won the day
So that's, just gets, that's I, I, was, I was prepared for your for you to miss. I had some ranged in there just to. Your, I know what I've just realised. I'm sure the comment section is going to point out. I should have recycled my attack modifier deck because at the end of the turn, there was a um, there was one of the crit sort of crit misses. So yeah, it's, there's a, there's a lot to get used to, um, even within. Sure get that. Um, okay, so reading the conclusion then. Um, the, you wipe the blood of the last vermling from your face and your thoughts return to the sleeping lion. Surely they've got a stew ready by now. It would be so perfectly warm and soothing and it's right through that gate. So, so close you can already taste it. But then another thought comes. It is highly unusual, brazen really, for a pack of vermlings to operate this close to the city. Could they be behind the string of disappearances? It's a long shot, but one worth investigating, especially considering the ambush site doesn't look like their base of operations. There's probably a nest nearby uh, that, with any luck, will have more information on our missing blacksmith. And treasure. Treasure would be nice. I'd like some treasure. <laughs> okay, so um, we've been given a reward, um, a new location, a hole in the wall, which is scenario two. So... Um, if you want to see us play that, please uh, join us in the next video. Um, also, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It obviously really does help us out a lot. Um, and if not, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.